Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. It's official. The 7-0 prospect Tony Yoka, who's the Olympic champion from Rio, will be facing his uh, French countryman Johan Dorpe, the former title challenger, on September the 25th. It'll be a 12-rounder. It is going to be on Canal+. Plus. So I like this fight, and it's one of these fights that's been talked about for a long time. It's a sort of obvious passing of the torch type fight. Yoka, the up-and-comer against Dorpa, who's been holding down sort of French, the French heavyweight scene along with Carlos Takam for about the past decade or so. So this fight had been sort of a natural one to make. They'd been talking about it for some time, and there was a little bit of a will-they-won't-there type of vibe about it. And really, it's the pandemic that sort of forced things to come together, because remember, Tony Yoka, ahead of what has been happening in 2020, had actually inked a deal with Top Rank to fight in the United States. But obviously, with things as they are, um, his promoter or new promoter, Bob Arriman, sort of said, look, he can't come over at the moment. We're not going to bring him over, but he needs to stay busy and active. He's got to have a fight soon in France. He'll um, you know, keep things ticking over. He'll keep active. And then eventually when things calm down, we'll bring him over. So this is probably the best of the options that were available to have uh, locally, especially with this fight being talked about for so long. In the past 18 months or so, it's been almost made a number of times, but there was a period where Dorpa took some time out of the sport for the birth of his first child, and there was talk it was going to happen in December last year, but things never really quite came off. And if you look at this fight with Dorpa being um, obviously a bit long in the tooth now, he is now 39 years old. He has a record of 38 and 5. Uh, it's probably the right time to make the fight before the window closes completely because, you know, it's probably was going to, um, you know, just disappear in the next sort of couple of years. It wouldn't have been a fight there to make. So I guess circumstances have brought them together in the end. But it's actually a fight that I like for Tony Yoka. It's an obvious progression fight. Uh, Johan Dorpe is a very durable guy, even at 39 years old. And in recent fights um, in the past couple of years, say against Jarrell Miller, you know, he went all 12 against Miller. The last half of that fight, he took a bit of a pasting. So I could see this one being a, a decent test for Yoka, who has made every poster winner so far. So 7-0 and um, currently, um, he's actually got one of the better records for a guy with a, a you know, relatively uh, small lineup of fights. Uh, he's coming off fights against um, Mikhail Wallace and Alexander Dimitrenko. But Dorpa is a cut above. You know, Demetrenko, when things get tough, often he looks like he just folds. And it's a sort of the same a little bit for Mikael Wallace. And we saw that again with Joe Joyce just the other weekend. But this is going to be a fight where Johan Dorpe will come with ambition. He is not exactly, you know, the most technically gifted fighter, but he's a hard man, Johan Dorpe. He's got a decent jab. He's got some decent power. And it's going to be a test for Tony Yoka. And really, so far, Yoka has been in at a certain level. And it's actually, you know, compared to other prospects, it's much better for a guy than that's only got that number of fights on his record. But Dorpa represents a step up from what he has faced so far. And he's going to take um, Yoka some rounds. And this is what he needs at this stage. You know, just blasting guys out after about three rounds and looking sort of spectacular. That's only going to get you so far in the heavyweight division because eventually, Eventually, you're going to come up against um, someone who can take your shots and maybe push you through a little bit of adversity. And hopefully, Duopa can do that in this fight. I'm certainly picking Tony Yoka to win, but I think that you know if he gets pushed into deeper waters, maybe we'll get to see you know him tested a bit. You know what sort of metal does he have about him? Taken a bit deeper, and it's at that point if things get a little bit tough and things aren't necessarily going all his way maybe there's a bit coming back or Yoka starting to um, just look a little bit one paced and you know not a lot of variation how's he going to respond is he going to show us you know he can uh, mix it up uh, ad adapt and adjust but also, what if Dorpa is able to start catching him? What if he does catch him with a big right hand? There is a question mark about Yoka's chin. How's it going to hold up? 
Endorpa. He's got decent power. It's maybe not sort of um, elite power in the heavyweight division, but certainly he can punch if he finds the target. And it would be good to see Tony Yoka test it. But at six foot seven, you know, the guy moves well. He's able to sort of, if he does have any deficiencies with the chin, certainly so far against the opposition that he's faced, which has been decent. You know, you've got the likes of Wallace, Dimitrenko, uh, Dave Allen, Cyril Leonay, also Jonathan Rice there, Travis Clark. Um, it's actually been okay opposition. Not huge punches, but guys who have got decent size, they can punch a bit, and he's made every post a winner. But this fight, I would expect Dorpa, he'll be working his jab. He'll be trying to make it difficult for Yoka if he can. But I guess um, the younger man, who's got a decade or and change over um, Dorpa, you know, he's going to probably want to make Dorpa work, tire him out. We saw that against um, uh, Jarrell Miller. Johan Dorpa had six good rounds, and then the last six, he looked um, pretty ragged. I think Tony Yoka will look to push the pace somewhat. Um, he Obviously, I think he'll be um, defensively responsible early on. He's not going to take any unnecessary risks, but I do expect he'll start to take over the fight. And he may end up starting to put a bit of a beating on Johan Dorpa, but he can't be reckless in there, because if he is, Dorpa is of the caliber where he's good enough to take advantage. So he's going to have to still you know, have his wits about him and not get overconfident in there. But it's a fight, it's, yeah, I like this one. It's sort of been, it's come at the right time because of the circumstances. And if it didn't happen now, was it going to happen at all? But it's a good sort of re-announcement to the heavyweight division in some form, because obviously facing a guy who's a former heavyweight title challenger, uh, cut above sort of what he's been facing, and with not a lot of great matchups at the moment, it's going to get him noticed. But I would expect Yoka to win this one and just um, sort of, at this point, I'd be expecting possibly by points or maybe a late retirement by Dorpa, but more likely I think this does go to the cards and it ends up being like nine rounds to three or ten rounds to two or you know something like that. I think early on in the first six rounds as in the Miller fight it will be competitive. I think um, Dorpa he will be fresh and he will be letting his hands go as much as he can. If he does think that Tony Yoka does have um, a, a weak chin, I'm sure he's going to be looking to target it. But this is a good fight for the heavyweight division at this point. I mean, we're being served up a lot of nothing mostly at this point, but I like it. It's come at the right time for these guys. I guess it's a little bit serendipitous. It's been made after all. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out